Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. How are you tonight? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the class. It's nice to see you again, to be here with you. So we are moving on. Please remember to continue with the platform. That is very important. Remember that we are going to finish our classes in the, the 27th. So, but we need to move on because sometimes there are some uh, some errors in the platform or some questions. So it's very important for us to, to continue. Okay, and uh, so uh, have you ever think about the weather, how it's changing? So for example, I remember that a long time ago in November, it never rains, but now it's still is raining. So uh, why do you think this is happening? Why do you think that the weather changes sometimes this way? You see the, the climate, climate change teacher? Yeah, it's changing a lot, right? So, because, uh, for example, I remember that like two or three years ago, on the 24th of December at night, it was, it was pouring rain, so it was crazy. Very, very crazy. This time, teacher, yeah. um, the last the last week, I remember raining a lot of, but in the, in the November, in the, uh, uh, a little years ago, not teacher, but this is the other time. So yes, exactly that. That is the thing, right? So sometimes, uh, I remember that a long time ago, maybe for these days, it was very cold. It was uh, with a lot of wind, but not rain. So now it's kind of normal. I don't know what is going to happen for December because almost always it's kind of cold, uh, but you are very right. The weather, the climate in all the world is changing, right? So that is a big situation, a big problem. And uh, I was I was reading somewhere that the next year, the next year is going to be one of the hottest in the world. Uh, a friend of mine, he seen lives in Europe and he said that then in Europe last year, this year, because of the hot weather, uh, there was some people moving to some, I don't know, what is the name of shelter in the world, to some shelter. So it's, it's difficult, but if, if that happens this year, it, it means that the next year is going to be crazy, right? So, and uh, do you believe that I don't know. How do you believe it's going to be the weather in the next 20 years? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think, teacher, the, the 20 years um, after uh, the times um, will be changed a very hot hot weather. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. I mean, if that is happening right now, uh, yes, in 10, 20 more years, it's going to be very, very hot. And another problem that we have also is that uh, the water, the water is contaminated, right? So probably, and, and the rain, not, maybe not going to rain that much. So what do you believe is a very good solution for this kind of situations? Well, how, what I don't know. Do? I don't know, teacher, if huh? with my comment is a solution, but uh, I think that the people move the other country that the weather is most cold. For example, Canada, Europe, because Central America and Africa, uh, 
uh, in the next year, the weather uh, will be most hot. Yeah, definitely. I, so, I know, I know, and uh, I study in, 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 ¿cómo se dice esta? I study here the, no me acuerdo cómo se dice hoja de árbol en, en inglés. ¿Cómo se dice, teacher? Uh, what do you say what? I'm sorry. Una hoja, las hojas de los árboles. Ah, uh, the leaves. Leaves. No, lips, lips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Uh, I study in the university. I remember the teacher, uh, <laughs> teacher told uh, we, uh, the uh, study in <laughs> reversion, <laughs> reversion <laughs> in, in weather. Huh? Por... Hay, hay un artefacto que se llama porómetro. Entonces, ese mide la actividad estomática de la planta. Entonces, él quería que alguien está sorprendido. Ya está abriendo el pedazo. Hola. Creo que María Julia tiene activado el micrófono. Ahí está. Este, entonces, usted puede regular un un microclima o un macroclima eh, sembrando árboles porque existe la, la actividad estomática de las plantas donde ellas expelen el, el oxígeno. Entonces, a nosotros nos estaban poniendo a que hiciéramos eso en, lo, en, en los árboles para ver cuánto oxígeno producía cada árbol. Ok. Y, oh, ya yes, yes, entonces... Eh, se llama porómetro, el aparato que mide, usted lo pone así, en la, en el, en la hoja, Ajá. y eso mide la cantidad de oxígeno que el árbol, y entonces dijo, ok, ahora que ya tenemos cuánto produce de oxígeno un árbol, saquémoslo por árbol, cuántos árboles necesitamos para que Santa Tecla recupere la, el clima de hace 50 años. Ajá. And uh, at the end, you got the number. How many trees do you need? What? A lot, a lot of trees. A lot, a lot of, of trees. trees, right? Yeah. I think. Yes. Sí, era un montón de árboles. O sea, yeah. tenía que volver a plantar todos los árboles que habían talado para, para que Santa Tecla subiera otra vez a, hiciera un bosque. Uh, yes, and actually that is one of the reasons why we have bad weather, right? Because, uh, I mean, the, uh, you know that the trees, uh, for them to grow and uh, produce a lot of oxygen, uh, they spend years, right? Years of growing. Uh, so but people, they, they cut the trees in one afternoon sometimes. And, uh, I mean, they cut years and years of of all these trees, so uh, it's not that easy, right? And uh, it's good. I mean, I, I, I totally agree uh, that you need to build new houses and uh, the progress, you know, is something very good, but also there should be a balance where you build something, but you also uh, keep some trees depending on, on the area, depending on how many people live there. And, uh, things like that one. So that is uh, also something that people need to consider, right? Teacher, uh, uh -huh. René mentioned, mentioned something very important, but uh -huh. I, I think that uh, a good strategy for our countries or for our government uh, is regreening uh, the mountain, regreening the, the volcano, uh, for the best weather um, in our country. But this action uh, we'll see in uh, five or 10 years after. Yes, next time. Definitely this is not easy, right? It's something that it's going to take a lot of time. And the problem is that uh, 
that is going to happen if people they start doing things but sometimes we don't do anything about it. and i was uh, thinking about this because i remember a piece of news i don't know if you saw that one that in the u.s and some other countries in europe they can produce rain they can manipulate the weather already so there are some things that produce uh, clouds and that clouds they can produce rain so that is very good because if uh, humanity they can create rain probably it's going to be um, a very good symptom for for the planet right good interesting right so let's check the attendance and then let's jump into the class Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Here, teacher. Good. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present, teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. 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 Sorry. Ah, okay. No. Uh, Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Present. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avides Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present. Good. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present, teacher. Very good. Perfect. So, uh, we're going to start tonight with a little video. So, I'm going to show you and then you're going to analyze and tell me what you understand on the video, okay? Let's see how it goes. Let me just do that. Here we go. Hi, I'm Fallon. I'm 16 years old and I go to Onehunga High School. I'm looking at the career of warehousing and distribution. Every day, over $200 million worth of goods move in and out of New Zealand. A lot of it is handled by reliable and flexible warehousing and distribution companies like Limfox. The operation involves three aspects. Warehousing, the storage and sorting of product, customer services, liaising with customers, and distribution, the transport of products to customers. G'day, Fallon. How are you going? My name's Paul. I'm the site manager here. Welcome to Limfox. Thank you. Good to see you've got your safety footwear on. Yep. Here is a safety vest, which uh, we have to wear all times while on site. We're pretty big on safety here. The Limfox warehouse is a very busy place and health and safety is always a top priority. So Fallon receives a full safety briefing and site induction talk before she starts any work. Let's go. Thanks. A number of major food manufacturers use this warehouse as a storage and distribution centre. About 99% of the product we get in here is imported in containers, uh, most of it out of Australia. The Operation D vans those containers at the back. The pallets are then checked in, put away into the racks. The orders then come through to us from our clients and we run the pick pack operation so it can be one carton or a full pallet and that's all controlled by this one desk here for the whole shed and all of the orders are sent out to the pickers to do their work on these RF units so if they follow the instructions from here nothing can go wrong. Once the order has been picked it's wrapped then moved to the staging area for trucking to customers like supermarkets and shops. Cool just through here. <sighs> Welcome to what 35 <sighs> and a half thousand pallets looks like. Wow. We go seven high, we've got a staff of about 80 to 100 full-time equivalents, and we go across two shifts starting at 6 a.m. going through to midnight. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. Okay. 
My role here is that I'm the site manager, and what that means is I have plenty of contact with the staff on the floor, sorting out any issues that may occur with them, but also offering encouragement and support to them, plus also with our clients, making sure that they've got no issues, helping them out with any difficulties they may have. So here we go, Fallon, here's one of the picking machines that we use to pick our clients' orders on. It's uh, electric powered, very nice and easy to use, a little bit like a uh, video game. Yeah. I'm sure you will have no problems adjusting to this. Do you want to get on and have a quick wee go? Yeah. <laughs> so here's the steering wheel, side to side, yeah. backwards and forwards, and up and down. After Paul has instructed Fallon in driving the picking machine, it's time to head out into the racks. Here we come, coming down, there it is, AN209A1. Yeah. Yep, you just level with it there. So what we need to do now is use the RF gun. The RF gun is used to scan the shelf, then the product, to check the right quantity is being picked. As a double check, the quantity left at the pick face is also calculated. So 44, 42. Cool, we're on to the next one. Where is that saying now? Um, go to AN200 A1. Which way is that? Oh, what does that mean? Reverse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Felon, where are you going? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too far. <laughs> Jokes. AN 200 A1. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do now? The gun, correct. Look at it. Well, I first started working in a warehouse when I was out of university as a holiday job and just continued going and just slowly went further and further and further up the chain and um, every opportunity that was presented to me, I took it. Yep, 64. Excellent. Fallon's catching on fast, but there's so much more that can be learnt. Transpol is the industry training organisation that handles qualifications for the warehousing and distribution industry. Robert Aiden is Transpol's communications advisor. For someone who's entering a role such as this straight from school, they could possibly get into the Level 2 Distribution and Warehousing National Certificate. That would be a really great start where they could come in, they'd be working full time, they could earn while they learn without a student loan, and from there the opportunities are endless. Fallon's made the most of this job opportunity by mastering reversing. Customer services is another important aspect of the operation. And Suzanne Restio, Limfox's New Zealand Fleet Administrator, shows Fallon what's involved. So what we do in, in this office is we handle all the queries for our customers um, when they call in. Uh, the customer service role basically is we're the point of contact for our, all of our customers. Uh, they come to us with any queries and uh, we help them out as, um, as much as we can with uh, the warehousing or the transport side of things. So we all go and source um, what the problem is, fix it and then go back to them um, and give them their solution. So everything has a solution as far as we're concerned. So what, what we need to do next is we just need to confirm with our customer that we've got the, the pickup request and um, that we've received it and that it'll be um, actioned as soon as possible for them. Hi, this is Fallon from Linfox. I'm just calling to confirm that we have a pickup. That we have a pickup. 15 cartons for you. For 15 cartons for you. Yeah, the pressure is on in this industry. It's a fast-paced industry, and so um, you're, you're juggling ten different things at once, and you've got to know where you are um, at any point at any time um, in regards to the customer queries. Cool. Thank you very much. Bye. No, that was really good. That was really good. <laughs> in a trainer, you're really looking for someone that's going to turn up, that yeah, reliable, good work ethic. They want to learn as well. Like put their hands up and say, "Look, can I learn more?" rather than just sitting back and, you know, carrying on as being one of the flock of sheep. You've got to stand out in a sort of way if you want to get ahead. Well, it's been a busy day for Fallon. She's already dreaming of driving the big forklift called the Reach Truck, but how did she find the job? This, this is fun. I like it. Fallon was a great girl. She's bright, she's confident, she took on the tasks willingly. Um, I think she'd be an asset uh, for anyone's company. Uh, really pleased with her. I've seen Fallon trying to reverse a picking machine and I know she has gotten better, but putting her up to a reach truck would be like putting her in a Formula One car, I think. Maybe next year. To start a career in warehouse and distribution, a basic knowledge of English and maths is preferred. 
Some companies like Limfox provide on-the-job training for skills like forklift driving and IT skills. Other opportunities for training include modern apprenticeships and national certificates in distribution. There are lots of prospects for specialising in the specific areas of warehousing, customer service, transport and dispatch. Okay, what did you understand on this one? I think, teacher, this is a, a, a very brief training about Trustqual company and uh, in the in a specific area in the company, the warehousing and distribution. She has the experience in a company, uh, this, the warehousing and distribution in a plant. And she has she has all the process uh, in 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 uh, about about the, the distribution. For example, uh, the the first the first step was the she she equipped equipped the 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 weight in a specific. Uh, for the first pass, uh, then and classify the box, search the product, order the product, and in the in the 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 boss uh, mentioned that she was competent. Very good. So yes, it's it's like a little training. She's uh, she was there just for one day to learn about this. Uh, different situations and uh, definitely was very interesting because uh, she was able to to learn many things uh, and the good thing is that uh, as as you saw in, at the end there are some requirements right English of course math also you require um, some logical things right and time available mm -hmm. training exactly and of course all the companies they provide training not all the companies the most of the companies but i believe uh at least in ensemble they give you a little training the only problem is that they give you the training and then you have to do things right so it's very fast that's very interesting teacher good perfect uh, any other comments on the video Yes, teacher, it's very important in, in these uh, places with the big uh, presence of the goods and uh, pallets and uh, equipment is very important, the security and the, uh, the give the order for all the, all the, the uh, facilities, okay? Very good, so yes you need to be very organized right in this kind of jobs you need to i mean love the order and everything that is related to that one because that is one of the most important things that you are very very organized nice okay so let's jump into the class tonight is interesting uh so this is uh the I don't know have you ever done processes before, but this is like the general, uh, let's say, ways of creating a process. So uh, you can see the different figures. Uh, these figures are very important because they represent something uh, in, in a process. So when you do a graphic process and you see one of these, uh, symbols, then you you need to know what is the meaning of that one. So, for example, the first one says terminator. Uh, if you see the circle, it's going to be like an oval, indicates the beginning or the end of a program flow in your diagram. So that is actually the word, a diagram, okay? So the square is a process. The process indicates any process function. So anything that is related to a process is going to be that one. The other one is decision. Indicates a decision point between two or more paths in a flow chart. 
So whenever you see that symbol, it's decision. The other one is delay. Indicates a delay in the process. So a wait, a waiting time. Then we have data. Can represent any type of data in a flowchart. So that is another thing that is very important. Uh, the next one is document. Indicates data that can be read by people such as printed output. So any document is going to be represented by that one. And the next one says multiple documents. Indicates multiple documents uh, for the same kind of process or procedure. Then on the other column says subroutine. Indicates a predefined named process such as subroutine or a module. So it's part of another routine. Then we have preparation. In the case, a modification to a process, such as setting a switch or initialization a routine. Okay, that is the preparation of something. Then we have display. In the case, data that is displayed for people to read, uh, such as data monitor or projector screen. So any kind of display is going to be that one. The other one says manual input. Indicates any operation that is performed manually by a person. The other one says manual loop. Do you know what is loop? Es un es un círculo con bucle. Un bucle, very good. So that is going to be uh, the one. It's like something that finishes and starts again, right? All right, then we have, it says a manual loop indicates a sequence of commands that will continue to repeat until stopped manually. The other one says loop limit indicates the start of a loop. Flip the shape vertically to indicate the end of it. So it's the same one, but the other one. The other one, the opposite. Then it says stored data. So in the case, any type of stored data, not only data, but stored data. Then we have the connector that is like a circle. In the case, an inspection point. So that is that. Uh, the next one says off-page connector. Just this shape to create a cross reference and hyperlink from a process on one page to a process on another page. So if you want to link two different processes, that is the symbol that we're going to use. They connect two different processes in different pages. Off-page connector. So it's the same, but uh, for different roles. So some, sometimes you're going to go forward or backwards. So that is why we have different page connector. The other one says the logical. Or, sorry, it's like when you have choices. You do this or you do this other situation. Then we have summing a junction that is a logical end. So when you have two processes and you have to do the two processes, you do this and this other thing is different from or. The other one is called collate. In the case, a step that organizes data into a standard format. Then we have sort. In the case, a step that organizes item list sequentially. So sort is like organize something, right, in a different order. Merge, that indicates a step that combines multiple sets into one. Then we have database. Uh, that is one of the most common ways. In the case, a list of information with a standard structure that allows for searching and sorting. And then we have internal storage, indicates an internal storage uh, device. So as you can see, there are many, depending on the symbol, that's the way that everybody is going to understand the process. And we have more symbols. If we go to the next one, we have this one. The next one says terminator. So in the case, the beginning of the end program that we checked before, uh, well, actually it's the same. So, and this is like a logistics flow chart. 
So with all the symbols that we have, uh, that we have learned before, we actually can go and, and create these flow charts, these uh, diagrams. For example, in this one, uh, we have the, the stock information that is the beginning, then the decision center, then it goes to uh, Tom's poor plan, and then uh, it can go to uh, goods, this goods distribution, distribution that it comes from the distribution center as well. It could be to a distribution slip. It could go to goods receipt that goes also to the delivery slip. Remember that these are documents. According to what we saw before here, that is a document. Here you can see that one. So whenever you do a goods distribution, you need to you need to complete a distribution slip. That is the document that you need to fill. When you have a goods receipt, you have the delivery slip. And when you have the financial settlement, you have the receivable and payable accounts. And it says, well, this is like the logistical. This is a very simple one. Uh, and uh, based on what we have learned here, we understand what you need to do, what kind of step you need to do in a diagram or in a process of procedure, right? Uh, and we have another example here. This is a sales flow chart. So we start with a quotation. Do you know what is quotation? Cotización. Cotización. Very good. So we start with a quotations and then a decision. You can see the symbol is decision. Customers agree to purchase. If they the answer of that one is no, that is the end of the process. Is with the square. If the customers say yes, sign the the papers, right? The contract. No. Okay, and then you go to the next decision. Is in stock, meaning that we have the inventory of the product. If the answer is no, arrange the deposit and then prepare the production. And then you go to the next step that is deliver the goods, right? And if the answer is yes, deliver after receiving the payment. And then you go back to deliver the goods. Then uh, if you deliver the goods, receipt of goods, the customer, they receive the, the products, right? And there are some after sales processes that you can have documents, or many other things. I believe this is very clear. This is very easy to understand. Uh, do you have any questions on this? No, it's very clear, teacher. I remember um, 30 years ago when I studied in the university, uh, we a program with a language basic. Basic language is very similar. Very good. Yes, basic. I remember that one. So, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> the the uh, these processes are very useful. I mean, the good thing about these diagrams is that you see the diagram and you understand the process. What you yes. have with it. Very easy. Yes, very easy for understanding. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not for for me. It's uh, uh, the difficult, but it's very easy for uh, understood. That is true. It's easy to understand, but yeah, sometimes to do things is very complicated because there are processes that are very, very complicated, right? Teacher, huh? I have a, a question. Uh, is, is this flow chart only the sales? This one is for uh, sales, but in general, we can say flow chart. Yeah, that is for any kind of diet. Okay, teacher. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, diagrams sometimes, uh, this kind of drawings is possible to do for many things. And a flowchart is for processes. Maybe that is the difference. The computer uh, has a specific program. Yeah, you can create for, that for one. This. That is true. So uh, all the Windows computers, you are going to find this one. And also nowadays, uh, there are some uh, websites. For example, there is uh, 
Draw, Drawio, Drawio. I don't remember exactly that website, but there is a website where you can find uh, already the templates, so you can start doing those those layouts. It's very good. It's very interesting. Yes, teacher. In the in the internet, uh, search the free the free program. That is true. That is true. So it's very easy, very convenient, right? Because in the past, I mean, you have to do this. You have to create the things, right? Or you have to purchase a program for that one. That was very expensive, but now it's very simple. It's very easy. Okay, this is another, thank you. This is another example. This is just a part of it. So you can see that in the at the beginning, we stored the message for processing. Then we have the XML message that is a document according to what you see there. And there is a decision, convert to XML, that is like Excel. Right, the study specific tasks, a uh, patient identify, and then store results in database or notify the sign user. And uh, also next to them, transform data. Those are data, remember? Execute scripts, apply filters, database calls, and then at the end, email on demand and reporting text page. So this is a different flow chart. And uh, this is a little bit different, right? So this is a little bit different because you start, for example, you start with the vendors or with the agents, brokers, uh, customs. So all the producers, like European vendors, brokers, sex, and then they decide the way that they are going to transport. If you see, almost always there is a transport. And then they go to the West Coast warehouse or to the East Coast warehouse. And then uh, ships, to the customers, sometimes there are returns. This is something very important that we need to we need to analyze, we need to consider when we are creating logistics uh, flowcharts. Okay, so it's possible that they are going to return some uh, of these uh, products. There is a percentage of people that they want to return. So this is uh, another chart for a supply chain network. It's a very interesting as well. Okay. And see, and this is another one. This is for a 3PL uh, flow chart. So we have your company or my company, and then we have different sites where you produce. And then as you can see, we have the supplier. The supplier is the one that is going to give us the raw materials, right? And uh, is there's going to be communication back and forth. Also, the inbound delivery, there is going to be like a truck. And then we have the 3PL that is going to be the mediator. And at the end, we have the customer. And uh, of course, in the middle, we have the warehouse, the transportation, and, and the delivery. So you can see that there are many ways of you to create a, a diagram, a chart. So a Everybody understands this. Any questions so far? Clear as of chat, of course. Okay, so now we're going to practice a little bit. Um, what we are going to do is that you are going to work uh, to create not a diagram because I know that a diagram is is complicated, but the step by step procedure. What I what is the process? What is the process to deliver some to from the production to the delivery? And remember that um, we are going to consider depending on that one. So you can choose any product, any service, and then create step by step a logistics. Uh, just mention that one and then explain the steps uh, for any product. Uh, in mind that you are going to produce something and you are going to send that to, I don't know, Walmart or to any distribution channel. So uh, the customer will be able to purchase that in any place in the country. So this is very interesting. For example, so if you go to La Curacao and you uh, want to purchase a refrigerator, you can purchase one in San Miguel and the delivery is in Santa Ana. So it's because they are everywhere, right? It's because they are in, in all the countries. So something like that is the one that we are going to do. So if you're going to do that,
just step by step and then present to the class. Any questions to the activity that we're going to do? Teacher, the activity is um, individual, um, pairs, or groups? It's going to be in pairs, uh, maybe two or three groups of three. Okay, teacher. Uh, okay. I need to ident identify uh, any product and des describe uh, step by step uh, the product and the deliver it. Uh, you mentioned, for example, uh, distribution, for example, Walmart and the and the other company exactly. in the count in the country. Yeah, within the country. So let's see how happens that within the country. Okay, teacher. Clear. Good, perfect. Let's work on that when I'm gonna create the breakout rooms right now.
Welcome back. So let's see what did you discuss. Uh, we're going to listen first to Blanca, Tunaka, Mauricio, and Silvia Patricia. Estamos, no lo hemos finalizado, teacher. Ah, okay. Do you need more time, everybody? Yes. Okay. You're ready? You're ready. Okay, so uh, let's go with you then. So you are Aida, Juan Roberto, Ramiro, and Roberto. Uh, yes. Please, okay. uh, share the screen. Okay. Ramiro. Do you okay. can see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, my team and I are going to talk about the flow chain. Uh, as you know, uh, flow, okay, the logistic flows refer to all the process that different um, companies, in this case, uh, run from the manufacturing of the marketing and a product that they have. Um, okay. Uh, but the important that is concept plays in the operation of a company and especially because in supply chain is crucial. Enable, um, I'm sorry, I can see it so well. Okay, to produce and provide a service and um, subsequent offer it to the customers so that they can cons consume uh, the different kind of product that, but the, lo the logistics is, is really important for the company because the condition of the product depends the, the correct management of the logistic flow and at the, at the same time, the delivery of the product uh, should be excellent. Okay, in this uh, presentation, we are going to explain what is a logistic flow on, no, what logistic flow, flow is. Okay, my peers, are going to talk about the different types of flows that exist in different companies, but in general, uh, they are talking about some type, but in general, okay? okay? Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Aida. It's crucial for the logistic flow uh, and the all the activities that a product goes through uh, for the manufacturing stage, to the marketing stage, including uh, transportation, storage, and distribution. Uh, the correctly management, ma managing uh, this activity uh, is very important, which are character, uh, uh, character said by constant movement of resource and information. Uh, is the, the first step to having an optimi optimized supply chain. To do, uh, to do this, it's important to know the logistic of your uh, our company in depth. Designing an optical logistic flow uh, begins with the demand analysis and planning. Without it, it's, it is impossible to program the product rate Take, a invent, uh, take an inventory, define the transportation strategies to the point of sale, etc. Achieving, uh, achieving an efficient logistic flow that increases the performance of the supply chain uh, does not depend only the task of logistic, uh, like uh, supply, storage, order preparation, and distribution and, and, uh, and, and, and delivery, but also uh, of the coordinated work or each uh, of the department uh, the, of the company, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Roberto Carlos, our uh, classmate, uh, is talking about the types of logistic flows. 
Okay, uh, only if you can uh, get up the, the, the text because I, I don't see all text, all paragraph. Okay, give me one a minute, please. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay, you can see? Uh, yes, but it's the end. It's the end of the presentation. You have to go back. Okay, Roberto Carlos, you can see? I don't see nothing now. Okay, no, no problem. I'm uh, talking about the types of logistic flows, uh, uh, but the Roberto Carlos have a problem with uh, uh, take uh, uh, the uh, the clay uh, uh, the uh, uh, for your phone correctly, Roberto Carlos. Yes, I don't have yeah. Wi-Fi now. It's following. No problem. The... No problem. Yeah. The type of logistic flows depending on the stage in which the they operate. Operate. Uh, there are too many types of logistic flows: internal flow, also known as production flow. The they refer to all the movements relative of the components and the different materials requiring in the production. Uh, or is if, for example, supply. Uh, uh, this includes the processes uh, of tra transport, transformation, manufacturing, handling, storage, and transportation of raw materials. Uh, and the uh, the other types is external flows. The external flows are divided to two types: are the supply flow, uh, the supply flow, and the distribution. Uh, The supply flow and the distribution flow. Supply flow has to do with the circulation of materials and consumables for the supplier to the warehouse. The distribution flow for this part concerns the movement or uh, finish or semi finished product for the warehouse to the end customer. This is the flow, uh, flow chain. And uh, all the uh, 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 different uh, flows. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, the the flow in the supply chain is something very very interesting. It's very important to understand how does work. Uh, very good. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, Blanca, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so, let's go. Yes. Okay. Mm, no podemos compartir en este momento, solamente lo leeríamos. Okay, no problem. Okay. I am um, Silvia on me the um, storage and transportation of of fruits. Um Step one, negotiation with the producer. producer. Step two, collection and, and cut, cutting of fruit. Step three, the selection by size and, and color. And number four, step step four, label, label, label it. Number step, step five, five, storage, in plastic boxes, ideally with ventilation. Step six, lo loading product to, to the truck. Continue me, my partners, uh, Silvia. Okay, okay the other is uh, the, for the products, uh, for example, the food and the vegetable, it is important to find packaging that security and the mer merchants and avoid shaking them. The conservation for 
There was a little bit of cut off, but that was fine. Thank you. Very good, perfect. So the next group is uh, Jose Alfredo, Oseas, and Veronica Elizabeth. Sorry, I have some problems with my internet. No problem, no worries. Okay, so we are talking about uh, something very simple. Um, in my company, uh, we produce a different um, animal, animal food. So, I'm going to talk about distribution of fodder, fodder, um, food for farm animals. In general terms, um, we are going to mention uh, the general steps when when we are going to to work in uh, delivering a product. The steps are the following. Client set the, or the order, sales department generate the requisition, requisition. Um, sales department check the stock. If we don't have the product in a stock, sales department communicate about it to the production department. Production department create a production order. Uh, production personnel create the product. We have a lot of more steps uh, into the production department, but we we pa we put this in, in in general way. Of course. After the product finish is finished, the product is taken to the warehouse. When the product is received by the logistic area, the production department enter the data to the inventory system. Uh, the product is dispatched. And finally, the product is delivered to the client. That's right. it. Very good, very clear. That was amazing. So uh, I believe this was very clear. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. And the last group is Ernesto, Andrade, Maria Julia, Monica, and Renee. Okay, and we we have a a production uh, Lorocos Lorocos plant in distribution and different different places in Pucaria and in Curtidos and export and exportation. ¿Cómo se decía emprendedores? Entrepreneurs. 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 Entonces, uh, the, the start in the take the order uh, after, uh, after uh, production and sequence in the 
a copy of center and warehouse uh, uh, quality control uh, packaging for the the last delivery with the client that the logistic is distributing a product is made made up of many different elements and together it is what a low good to reach customers for the place or production if you want to know more about the distribution logistics is uh, how it works keep reading and we will we give you the essential case that show that that you should know about it continue my partner Tay. okay okay uh, René thank you thank you for show us the the uh, a, a brief a brief uh, flowchart about the the Loroco production and to delivering but uh, please uh, let me introduce yourself the uh, the employees our company uh, the process engineer is René Molina uh, our chief execute operation is Maria Julia and the leader of the warehouse is Monica Avalos and Ernesto Andrade is a delivery manager and uh, the product what is the, the, the product distribution logistic the logistics of distribution of the product in the set of actions that allow the physical movement and displacement of product from places of production to place of consumption. This, this through log logical, um, logistical transportation, it covers both the planning and freight transport phases. That is, it is a distribution and transportation logistics process that's bring together but the theoretical organizations and the practical part of the displacement or physical movement of the product. Puede leer entonces Mónica o María Julia, cualquiera de ellas, la positiva. Ok. Hay una después para Mónica o para Ahí se. Ok. Se turnan cualquiera. ¿Quién empieza? Ok. I am start. Um, the Loroco Flower is a. Um, the, the farm is a, in Zapotitan La Libertad is a, a product the Loroco Flower is a product the a good good quality is a is a a place is a place it is a place the 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 production plant um a good a good a good product is a like like is a like for client is a the is a what what is a product distribution logistic uh, the logistic of distribution of a product is the set of, of action that allow the the physical movement and this displacement of product from place of product to place of of consumption e this this drug logistical transportation it is compares but the planning and freight transportation basis that is is a distribution and transportation logistic process that bring together but the theoretical organization and the practical part of the displacement or physical movement of the product of, of the product um la, logistic the, the 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 order is a product is a warehouse etc uh, 
Mónica. Um, distribution distribution function cover different aspects and respond to various logistics, objectives, demand planning. This is an essential part of the distrib distribution logistics based on the prediction of the demand, the supply of products that must be available to satisfy it must be planet, warehouse, and converse. Conservation work, and they ensure that wells are in optimal conditions to respond to demand, order, processing, cover, loading, picking, and packing tasks which allows paper to be prepared according to consumer demand and then transport the products. Design, design, and planning of delivery route service to optimi optimize the distribution and transportation of, of goods process. Me measuring performance through the use of KPIS logistics and, and distribution is not complete without monitoring the process itself using indi indicators from day to logistic process the performance of each of the process is measure, measured. Okay, very good. Yes. This is uh, every process for the take order, uh, delivery, uh, uh, deliver client. Okay. Yeah, it's a big process, right? And uh, these perishable uh, products also are, are very important that it's going to be very efficient, very, very fast. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Very good job, everybody. So let's continue with the book. It's time for the book. So uh, it says we are still in unit number two. It says I will be able to express the advantages of outsourcing a 3PL service provider. Have you heard the term third party logistics before? Of course you have. Why do companies use 3PL, third party logistics? Because it's better and more efficient, right? And then uh, we have number two, exercise number two. It says pair work. Number the steps to outsource a third party logistics provider. And we have developed a detailed plan for the 3PL section process, evaluate, interview, and select. Review the checklist of 3PL capabilities. Do an internal assessment of your current and future needs. So in your opinion, my friends, which one is the first step according to what we have checked before? For me, teacher, is the the Number two, develop a detailed plan for the 3PL selection process. Oh, step please. two. That is me. step number two. Okay. So, yeah, that might be something number two. And what is number one in all the process? Uh, I don't know, teacher. The, the last one for, for me, do an internal assessment of your current and future needs. I don't Definitely. Know. Yeah, that is it. So number one is do an internal assessment of your current and future needs and then develop a detailed plan for the 3PL selection process. Nice. What is number three then? Uh-huh. Is provide protection 
again, risk physical loss damage to freight. Uh, well, actually, we are on this part. So what might be the number three? Evaluate, teacher. Evaluate, interview, and select. Probably that is the last one. The last so, one. Okay. The review, the list, the checklist. Yeah. Of review the check capabilities. Yeah, that would be it. review the checklist of CDPL capabilities and then evaluate, interview, and select. When you select, you already sign the contract with the CDPL and many other things. Okay. Nice. So now we're going to do exercise number three, building vocabulary. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to read everything and then check what would be the correct answer for uh, the concepts there. So let's see how it goes. Okay, teacher. Okay, so let's check, my friends. The first one says a function that allows companies which rely to remove or minimize the risks associated with a vehicle investment. What is that? Number four, charge insurance. Cargo insurance. Very good. That is the answer. Cargo insurance. Uh, the next one says envelopes or package shipments that weigh less than 150 pounds. The difference in English is pounds. Uh, envelopes, do you remember what is envelopes? Envolver. Um, yeah, very good, envolturas, nice. Okay. So what will be the answer for that? For me, teacher, is the number, number five, 
a small package service. Okay, that seems very really good. Very good. Nice. The next one says provides protection against all risks or physical loss or damage to freight. Transportation. Um, well, this is about protection, so it's not transportation. Um, no, in number three, freight share claim insurance. Freight claim insurance, very good. So that would be it. And the next one says, a legal demand by a shipper to a carrier for financial compensation for a loss or damage of a shipper. Mm. Cargo insurance. Uh, I'm sorry, which one? Yeah, yeah, this is cargo insurance actually. This is the one. So number one is going to be the function. So that is a keyword in number one. The loss company would like to remove or minimize risk associated with vehicle investment. Since that's vehicle investment, that will be the transportation. And the last one, uh, let's see, the physical process of transporting commodities, emergencies, goods, and cargo. Well, actually, that is probably um, that one, right? Okay, and let me see. I don't see any uh, commodities. Do you know what is commodities? I'm sorry? Commodities. Mm, it could be something like that sometimes. Uh, commodities like, are... Like, like a good. Like a product. Yeah, basic like products. Product. Basic oh, products. Okay. Commodities are basic products. And what is merchandise? What is merchandise? Mercadeo. Mercadeo. Mercaderia. Oh, mercader. So it could be something. Yeah. Very good. So this is something we're not going to do. But let's go to the conversation. Uh, it says, I will be able to sketch a basic plan to select a 3 p file. Sketch is like to create... Uh, a, a little plan, something like that. How do you pick the right 3PL for your business? We checked that already. Is price the most important criteria to decide on the right 3PL? Definitely not, right? Depends on your need. Depends on what you want to achieve, uh, the kind of products and the quality of the service that you're going to have. Definitely that is going to be the one. So let's check the conversation. I'm going to read, you check the pronunciation, then you practice, and then we check the, uh, we check the meaning of some words. It says, there is no more room in our house for more of your organic shop. Don't you think it's time to take business out of the house? I found something called third party logistics on Google. This service could help you out with the storage. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of my knowledge, the shop is selling like crazy, and I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packaging. Choose a couple of those companies from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. Do you have any pronunciation questions? No legit. No no legit. No legit. No legit. Yeah. Any other pronunciation question? It's good, teacher. Very good. So let's practice. Uh, let's start with you, Ernesto and Ramiro. Let's see how it goes. 
Ok, Ernesto. I am both. Do okay. You agree? Yes, yes, yes. Totally agree. Thank you, Ernesto. There is no more room in our house for more of your organic soap. Don't you think it's time to take business out of the house? I found something colored third party, uh, party logistic on Google. The service could help you out with the storage. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of the knowledge, uh, the shop is selling like crazy, and I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packaging, shoes, a couple of those companies from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. Very good, perfect, nice. Thank you. Now, Maria Julia and Veronica Elizabeth. Okay. Veronica. Hola, hello. I start. Okay, go ahead. Okay. There is not more room in our house for more of your organic shop. Don't you think it's time I take business out the of the house? I found something called through the party logistic on Google. The services could help you out with the storage. I don't think so. Oh, as far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of my knowledge, the shop is selling like crazy, and I believe it's called help you to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packaging. Choose a couple of those companies from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. Very good, perfect. Now we're going to go with uh, Seas and Roberto Carlos. Okay. It's possible for you, Roberto. I don't think so. Uh, what about Rene Molina? Sorry, sorry, but I don't give the, the microphone. Ah. Okay. You want to be the first one? Okay. Dale, With, the With, the With the sales. With the sales. Okay, who is start? Uh, you can start. Okay. okay. There is no more room in our house. For more of your organic soup, don't you think it's time to take business out out of the house? I found some. I found something called third party logistic on Google. The service could help you, could help you out with the storage. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of my knowledge, the soap is selling like crazy. And I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of sourcing the packaging. Choose a couple of those companies from the internet and then we can call them to get to get more to get some advice. Very good, perfect, nice. Now we're going to listen to uh one is not possible. Okay, Rene and Blanca. Okay, I am start. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
there is more room in our house for more of your organic soup. Don't, don't you think it's time to take business out, out of, of the house? I found something called their, their party logistics on Google. The, this service will help you out with, with the storage. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of my knowledge, the shop is selling like great, and I believe it will help you to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packing. Choose a couple of those, those company from the internet and then we can call them, go get some advice. Give me the Very applause. Good. <laughs> Very good, perfect. Okay, uh, Jose Alfredo, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Monica, is it possible for you? Not possible. Let's see who else. Aida. And Mauricio, is it possible for you, Mauricio? Okay. Not possible for Mauricio. What no, about okay. John? Jonathan, yeah, Aida. Just let me check because I don't know if the other people are able. Uh, Silvia, Patricia, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, Aida and Silvia, let's see what goes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Silvia, uh, you and Nai or what? Okay. <laughs> Okay, there is no more room in our house for more of your organic soup. Don't you think it's time to take business out of the house? I found something called call their party logistic on Google. This service could help you out with the storage. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third-party service. To the best of my knowledge, the soup is selling like crazy, and I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packaging, choose a couple or choose company from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. Very good, perfect, thank you. Let's check some pronunciation things. Um, called, remember, called. And let's see, I don't think, enough, higher. And, and I don't see any other, so let's see some things. It says, uh, there is no more room. Do you know the meaning of that sentence? No hay más espacio. No hay más espacio. So this is not about a specific room. So room sometimes is about space, uh, about anything. Um, what is sub? Jabón. Good. Let's see what else. As far as I know, what is that? Okay, this is very common actually. As far as I know, it's something like hasta donde se. Uh, 
big enough. What is enough? Do you remember? Excuse me, teacher. I, I can't hear you. Uh, what do you mean as far as I know? Yeah, as far as I know is hasta donde sé. Ah, okay. Thank you. Hasta donde sé. Okay. So, enough. What is enough? Suficiente. Very good. And higher, do you remember what is higher? Contratar. Very good. And to the best of my knowledge. Okay, this is a very common expression as well. It's parecido a decir uh, hasta donde sé. También se parece. It's kind of the same. So, so I'm sending like quick. Let me see what else. Okay, no more. So, uh, it says read the conversation again and answer the questions. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to find the answers for the questions in the conversation. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's check. Number one says, are Bob and Daisy having problems to store their products? Yes, they are. Very good, that is it. Do they know a lot about 3PLs? No, they don't. No, they don't, very good. Do you think Bob and Daisy will consider prices when hiring a 3PL? What do you think? Teacher, uh, can, can you read please the, the third question? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think Bob and Daisy will consider prices when hiring a 3PL? What do you think? Mm. For the future, yes. Yes, that is the correct answer. It's yes, because here it says the business is not big enough, big enough. So that means that they don't have a lot of money, right? So they have to think about the price when they are going to hire the other company. Maybe in the future they can change the three PL, but at the beginning, uh, money is very poor. Well, uh, uh, all. The time is very important, but at the beginning, uh, you don't have a lot of resources, right? So that's why you need to think a lot about this, uh, the spending of this uh, company that is going to manage. Maybe it's a good invest uh, investment, but uh, you they need to think about that because it's a good. Good. Do you have any questions here? One, 
for for me it's it's clear teacher very good clear as of chat nice <laughs> no. <laughs> no she says very good Ernesto. tell me please roberto it's clear how the the corona beer <laughs> In the factor day in the night. Yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> in, in mind the experiment. In mind that you drink a Johnny Walker and beer and then speak in English. I don't know oh. what would be the result. <laughs> very very yeah, fast yeah. and very fluent. Yeah. Great Germany. Yeah. And sing to the all our singer. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very Speaking good English. Speaking about a lot of pupusas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be a very nice experiment that sometimes we have to do. <laughs> very good, my friends. So this was the class of tonight. So we're going to check about the attendance. And of course, then we're going to go to bed. Uh, let's see. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Present teacher. Good. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Um, present teacher. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present teacher. Present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Sorry. Good. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Here. Good. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present teacher. Good. Veronica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Perfect teacher. Perfect. All right, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in Dream English. Thank you, teacher. Nice class today. Have a nice, nice night. So do you. <laughs>